Hi everyone, it's Succulents Box here. Today we'll be introducing Haworthia zebra and why it's the best succulent for a beginner. Haworthias are notable in their ability to grow even in low, indirect light, typically found indoors. Unlike other succulents, it prefers bright, indirect light but can thrive even in medium and low light condition. Extra light can help bring out the stunning red and orange pigments, but intense direct light can yellow the plant and leave sunburn. In the afternoon when it's getting really hot, you definitely want to put your Haworthia zebra in shade. Dry tips like this is a common sign showing that your Haworthia might be getting a little bit too much sunlight. Haworthia zebra needs moderate watering. Overwatering can quickly lead to root rot and is the most common way to kill or damage Haworthia. Only water your Haworthia when the soil dries out completely. One tip to check for moisture level is sticking your finger in the soil to the second knuckle. If it feels dry, then it's time to water your succulents. Water deeply but infrequently and keep the pot in a well-ventilated area to accelerate drying. We recommend containers with drainage holes, especially for beginners. For watering tools, use a squeeze bottle instead of a spray one. It's designed to make it easier to control where the water goes, which highly minimizes the risk of water sitting on the leaves and causing rot. You can easily spot signs of overwatering in your Haworthia zebra. Those are often yellowing leaves with a mushy look. Also, when the plant holds too much water, the base would start to turn white and feel soft to the touch. If this continues, your succulents might end up dying from root rot. To save an overwatered Haworthia, try to take your zebra out of the pot and clean off all the wet soil from the root. Let it air dry for a few days before repotting your Haworthia. Gritty and fast draining soil is ideal for your Haworthia zebra. If you only have normal soil, you can make your own succulent mix by adding 50% pumice or perlite. Haworthia zebra have long root systems, so you should plant them in a deep pot. The extra space will help provide airflow around the roots and give the plant more room to grow. Haworthia are not cold hardy and can easily die if temperatures fall below freezing point. They can only be grown outdoors in zone 10, and ideally they should be indoors throughout the winter and kept between 60 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit year round. Haworthias actively grow during cooler time and are dormant in the hottest summer months when it's above 80 degrees Fahrenheit if grown outdoors. When kept indoors, they hardly go dormant because the temperature is not as extreme. Hence, don't reduce your watering if they're not in dormancy. The easiest way to propagate Haworthia zebra is through offsets. New small offsets will sprout from the base of a mature plant over time. Wait until they are about two inches tall and you can gently twist and pull them away from the mother succulent. Once you replanted them in a well-drained mix and give them some good watering, they will thrive just like a mature plant. Propagation by division and leaf cuttings is also possible for some, but it's much more difficult. If you want to try leaf propagation, make sure you pick healthy leaves and the ends of the leaves are clean. Given ideal condition, new pups will grow within three to four weeks. Haworthia zebra is a great plant for beginners. Even if you don't have a green thumb, you can hardly go wrong with this succulent. They're great home decoration and the perfect gift of nature to someone you love. Another benefit is that they're non-toxic, so you won't have to worry if your pets happen to nibble on some of their leaves. Hope you enjoyed our video and see you next time. For more, you can find us at succulentsbox.com or on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, and TikTok.